doctor is in. No religion allowed here, just grace and truth. You've entered the No Religion Zone with Pastor Greg Lee. Hey, you've entered the No Religion Zone. This is our video podcast for the week. And we've been talking for several weeks now on spiritual warfare. And there's a lot we've covered, and yet there is still so much more that we need to look at. I don't know how long we'll go with this, but remember why we're doing this. Because of the current crisis, we've got to know how to fight. This People don't understand, this is an attack of the enemy. And it just didn't happen randomly. Stuff never happens randomly. I shared and proved scripturally that everything that gets manifested on this earth is either a result from the kingdom of God, which God is the one authoring everything regarding the kingdom, or the kingdom of darkness, which is the enemy, the devil, Satan, unleashing what he can and will on this earth that you and I have to contend with as well as everybody else. So there's only two kingdoms. And so we're part of that war going on between those two kingdoms that started, we talked about this Sunday morning, that started before we were born. This war between God and the devil started before Adam and Eve. In fact, you see, now watch this, you see in the garden that God placed two people in that garden. And here comes a third one. And you see what happens. It's an attack through deception and lies. We showed you that is how the enemy, that's his weapon. He's only got one weapon, lies, deceit. He's banking on your ignorance. He's banking on your deception. In Revelation chapter 12, it says he's out there doing what? deceiving the nations. That's his weapon. We told you what the weapon of God was Sunday morning. And his weapon is truth. So it really is simplified down to two things. Truth versus lies. That's it. And so I want to share with you, I had something else that I worked on this morning, but it just wasn't registering in my spirit. I, I, I couldn't do it. It wasn't what God was doing, and so I sat for a few minutes, and um, this was something he laid on my heart a while back, and uh, so I I really felt this was part of where we're at and where we're going. So I'm going to go with this one uh, this week in the podcast. Now, what I want to talk to you about is the weapons of our warfare, how we are to war with the Word. Warring with the Word. I remember back in the early, early 90s, so I'm going to say 90, 91, I was listening to this particular message from um, a guy that I was getting messages from out of uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, You may not know his name, it doesn't matter. And I was listening specifically to this one particular message, and he shared an incident that happened with him that has stuck with me since. I don't think about it all the time, but you know what I mean. And I want to share that story with you as an opening to this podcast. Now listen to what he says. He went on a business trip. He's a pastor of a big church. And he went with one of his parishioners who was a businessman on a particular trip. I don't know what it was. And so the guy said the night before, they're in a, they're in a hotel room. And he said, hey, would you like to get up early and pray with me? And the pastor said, sure, I have no problem doing that. Yeah, what time? He said, 5 o'clock. I get up around 5 o'clock. He said, all right. So um, the alarm goes off. They get up. And this is in a motel room. And he says he opens up the Bible and starts praying. Then he pulls out this notepad that he had. And so he's just letting him take the lead. The pastor's letting the businessman take the lead. He's just going to jump in and just assist him in this prayer. It says, I did. It's his prayer, right? So he's just going to go with the flow and let this man lead. Well, when he pulled out this notebook, he started speaking the word. 
And so he was agreeing with that word, and he would speak scriptures that would come to him, as this guy would, out of that out of that um, little notebook that he had. Well, what was in that notebook was um, promises and scriptures that he prayed with. Now watch this. Here's where I want to go with this. He said when they started getting into that word and started speaking that word, he said the atmosphere in that hotel room changed tremendously. And when it was all said and done, he said to the guy, what, 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 what's going on? What, what, tell me about the notebook. Tell me. He goes, because I've never really prayed this. Now, this, is, this, this guy had grown up a Baptist, this pastor. And he was just coming into um, the Pentecostal, charisma, charismatic, whatever, whatever you know, spirit-filled, whatever terminology you want to use. And he was learning a lot himself. And so this guy began to share. That's what he did. He would pray the word and he would speak the word and he would war with that word he goes he said the pastor said well it works he said because i don't know about you but when we started doing this the whole atmosphere in that room was charged with the glory of god and he's he has taught this since and um and it was on this particular message and i've shared it a few times i haven't recently but i want to share it with you and some teaching on that today how you can how it is it's the only way folks it's not one weapon it's not one weapon see the Bible says the weapons of our warfare the weapons of your war the warfare you engage in the weapons are not carnal meaning they're not physical meaning you can't go get a book and it gives you secrets and keys and principles and steps how to fight the devil. That, that's all carnal stuff. There's only one way to fight the enemy. One way to fight the enemy, and that's what's the, with, with the word. Well, how, how can you prove that? Ephesians chapter 6, it says, The sword of the Spirit, which is part of the armor, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Now think about it. The sword of the Spirit that we are to fight with. Remember, the the, war, the the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're not man-made. They're not engineered and orchestrated by man in any way, shape, or form. They're, all that stuff, programs, principles, key, any, any, any fad, anything like that, that they're trying to promote, it's physical if it comes from man. The only thing that does not come from man is the Word of God. That's it. That's all. Anything, anything added to the word is man. All you have is the word of God, and anything else you add to it becomes part of what comes from man. So the sword of the spirit is our only offensive weapon in the kingdom of God. Now you know we've, we've shared this. The scripture says, "Man shall not live by bread alone." by physical means. There's something else man has to live by, and that is the Word of God. That which proceeds out of the mouth of God is your sword. Think about it. In the book of Revelation, the sword is coming out of Jesus' mouth. That's the picture you have in the book of Revelation. The sword is coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Well, that's the Word, the Word coming out of His mouth. He is that Word coming out of our mouth. So we have to have that sword coming out of our mouth as we see it in symbolic form in the book of Revelation. You've got to do something with that word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How many Christians let the words of the Bible stay within the, the, um, the Bible itself? In other words, they never pick it up, and if they do, they don't know what they're reading, and they close it. They don't know what to do with that word. They, they, they try to live by it, but that's not the same thing. Living by the Word is not the same thing as believing it, getting a revelation of it, and then speaking it out. You're speaking out of revelation. Now the difference is, and why this won't work if it doesn't come out of revelation, is all you're doing is mimicking what's in that Bible. Now it may, you may have grace on that as a new believer, not knowing any better. But after a while, that word you're speaking 
has to be believed in your heart. It means you got to get a revelation. You got to know the covenant. You got to know what you're saying. I mean, I could I could say when I first got saved, Jesus Lord, and and, and speak Jesus. I don't know what that meant. What do you mean Jesus Lord? I didn't even know what Lord was. What the what the meaning of the Lord was. But I could have just been saying it because I heard somebody else say it. There may be a little bit of grace on that, and that might work. God might allow that to work for a season. But as we grow in the Lord, we have to understand what that word means. That's the knowledge of the truth that sets you free. It's not just truth, but it's the knowledge of that truth that sets us free. And man lives and wars. So he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That living includes war. So man shall, you could say this, man shall not war, but accept what comes out, the words that come out of the mouth of God. Because part of living is war. Now think of Jesus in the wilderness. You know the story where he's tempted of the devil. Three different times he's tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Now I don't know for sure, but I I believe that the enemy, Satan, showed up physically. I don't think that was a dream or a vision. I think that was a real one-on-one -on -one thing going on there in the wilderness. However, if it wasn't, and it was just a spiritual thing happening, isn't that what happens to you and I? So, though it may have happened to Jesus physically, where he physically saw the devil, you and I are going to in the same way, but in a more of a spiritual way, go up against the demons and the principalities and powers, but in the same way. You may not see them, but you're going to be going up against them. Now picture yourself in the same scenario as Jesus, but the devil's not there. It's just the spirit coming at you. And you've got to handle that the same way Jesus did. So if lies are coming to you, like say right now you're fearing the virus, right now you're fearing sickness, right now you're fearing money, you're fearing the economy and the devil's lying to you, or people on TV are putting fear on you and anxiety and worry and care and all of that, and you're coming under the delusion of what they're saying. Well, you have to do the same thing Jesus did. you got to talk back to the TV you got to talk back to the devil. See, a lot of people don't believe that, but isn't that what Jesus did? Did he not talk back to the devil? When the devil talked to him, he fixed it with what? Scripture. Everything that Jesus spoke back to the devil was the unadulterated word of God. Not fads. Not what some preacher preached Sunday morning. Strictly just the word, because the sword is the word. Listen, my... My, um, um, I don't do this, but let's say that I was one of those motivational speakers. And that's all I do is motivate you. Well, that you can't war with motivation. Jesus didn't, didn't use motivation on the devil. You know, his motivation was the word of God. He spoke that word. And if you're, if you're not going up against these things, now the devil's slick. Your TV is being used by the enemy when it comes to lies and deception. So turn it on to something that's more wholesome and good. But when they're lying to you, how, how do I know if they're lying to me? If it brings fear, do you think that's God? The Bible says God did not give you a spirit of fear. So if you're watching something and it's depressing you, and you're coming under fear, worry, trepidation, all kinds of things going on that's unresting in your spirit, you can't tell me that's God, that's the Holy Spirit ministering to you. you got to know that's the enemy talking to you through that television, talking to you maybe even through a preacher. Not all preachers are preaching the word right, so it may he, he, the enemy's an angel of light. He'll, he's not going, look, he knows you're not going to tune into a satanic service, a ceremony. He knows, okay, you're not going to do that. But he knows the things you think are good that you'll tune into, he will use against you. Called media. Called Facebook. I'm going to tell you something. I'm almost at the point that I don't care that my message is on Facebook. I'm ready to wipe that slate clean. 
and quit. I just and I can't stand this the the, the I say ignorance, but it's deception. Because deception produces ignorance. And I can't take some of the I, either I gotta just not look at it at all, and then my friends will get mad because I'm not liking the stuff that they're putting up there. I can only do 30 seconds to a minute and I gotta get off of there, man. It's 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 a, it's a it can be a great tool, but it can also be something that just drives you up the wall. I you know what I'm doing? You know what? If I keep talking about it, I'm going to end up doing it. When I tune into a Twitter, a, somebody's Twitter account or Facebook, I don't do Instagram, so I don't care about that. Um, I am letting them speak into my life, reading what's on their wall. A matter of fact, I, ha I used to have, I used to allow people. And I'm going somewhere with this. I used to allow people to post things on my Facebook until some of it was like, "Are you kidding me? Don't put that on my Facebook." And so I would take it off and offend them. So I had to sit a few of my friends down and say, "Let me explain something to you. How I see my wall on Facebook." When I was a kid, when you came into my room, you would see pictures of rock stars, rock bands, and girls. Like Charlie's Angels had them plastered. Every, every good-looking girl, every good-looking model that was on a poster somewhere, you know, I'd buy it and stick it up there. Along with, So girls and music, girls and music. I lived for both when I was a kid. But that's those were my walls that I could do anything with because it's my room and I explained to them that's that's that wall on Facebook is like my room I'm not gonna just let you put a poster in there that I don't want don't like don't agree with and that's that's how I see it so then I'm thinking my god every time I turn on Facebook I'm going into the rooms of all these people and letting their wall speak to me and I and, 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 I, and I rarely, there's a few out there that put some good stuff on there. But for the most part, I don't get it. And I just, it's torture sometimes. Just telling you. And when this crisis hit, it just made it 20 times worse. You know it was already bad. But this is outrageous. And I could go on what I saw today that's really, I should talk about, but it's not what I'm talking about. But my point is, what are you listening to? What are you allowing in your head? Because that's where the battle is. The battle is in your head. So whether it's Facebook, Twitter, media, news, entertainment. Oh, don't get me started on the Hollywood people that are trying to talk down to me. How I'm supposed to stay at home and do this and do that. Do you understand these people are not staying at home? We have caught, I don't know, you probably don't watch the right stuff, but there are all kinds of videos out there of these talking heads that are out in public doing stuff without masks, and they're talking to us that we're supposed to be doing it, and they're not. I can, I, I can give you two right now. George Sinophilus, or whatever his name is, of ABC, was caught. He's got the virus, and they caught him out there at a park walking around without a mask, and he's got the virus. Chris Cuomo from CNN was caught going to the Hamptons and he's supposed to be quarantined because he has the virus and they're telling you from their from their thrones how you need to stay at home but they're not I'm done with that kind of stuff Hollywood's the biggest hypocrites I've ever seen in my damn life it's just ridiculous and don't get me started I need to stop right there because that's the kind of stuff I, I, I'm, I'm just done with I ain't letting these people or anyone speak into my life except the Word of God now now, I just got off of this. I got to jump back in. Where was I? Talking about the word, warring with the word, as Jesus did the devil in the wilderness. Okay? So, we know that Jesus dealt with the, 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 the enemy. He warred with the enemy with the sword. So, it only makes sense. That's how Jesus, he spoke the word, and so are we. There's nothing else you are required to do. 
And you know the church gives us a million things to do to overcome this, do, do this, don't do that, got to be this, got to be that. And it's not the case at all. The only offensive weapon in the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6 is the Word of God, the Bible, the sword, the Word. How about the centurion that Jesus came across one day? This guy's not even saved. He doesn't even know the Ten Commandments. Never lived the Ten Commandments in his life. He's, 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 a, he's a heathen. But he knows Jesus can heal. So he makes his way to Jesus and finally and finally finds him and says to him, Hey, i got a servant way back home, miles away, who's sick. And Jesus said, Well, I'll go with you and heal him. And listen, the centurion said, No, mm -mm, you don't need to do that. Listen to what he says. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus takes a few steps back and says to the crowd, I have never, now listen to what he's about to say, I have never seen great faith like this in all of Israel. This is a guy who, who, who's never been to church. He's never read the Bible. He's never lived by one commandment of the ten. But his faith in the words of Jesus made Jesus say, I have in all of Israel, in all of Israel, uh, you, what I'm about to say is going to offend you. In all of Israel, and that includes John the Baptist. He was part of Israel. I have never seen great faith like this in all of Israel. So what does that tell us? Do we believe this Bible? Do we believe that the word in our mouth is that powerful? Is it a sharp two-edged sword? Do we believe the word in our mouth is all we need in fighting the enemy? Well, Jesus did, and that centurion did, because Jesus spoke the word, and that centurion said, Just speak the word, Lord, and you can change this thing overnight. Do you realize that you can change your situations and circumstances like the way that centurion believed Jesus could? So I don't know, what are you, what are you facing? What, what, are you, what are you going through? This current crisis is a dress rehearsal for future battles. That you're going, you may have a battle that's not even virus associated with okay so you 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 got to learn how to fight everything this way so what if you don't like a certain thing in your life and it doesn't line up with what God's Word says or his covenant provides then it's in your mouth where the change comes from it's in your mouth this change comes from in your mouth See, you're, you know we're all guilty of this. We're all guilty of this. We're coming to God, and we're blaming God for this, blaming God for that. Oh, God, do this. Oh, God, do that. And there are occasions that you got to trust in the sovereignty of God to move. But I'm going to tell you, most of your problems can be fixed with your mouth. The Word of God in your mouth. And if you can't find it in the Scriptures... Then you have the Holy Spirit. And this is what I do. Lord, if I can't find something in the Bible to use, to war with, then I'll say, Lord, speak to me. And I'll get a phrase. And I'll speak that phrase. Because Jesus said, uh, or Paul said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the words of Christ. Faith comes by, and that means the proceeding the, the now lively word of God. So this, there are times that the word won't come out of the Bible, but it'll come out of your spirit, and you speak that. I'm just, I, I just can't get off of this. I'm going I'm to keep on for a minute or two, and then we'll take a break. Listen to what that centurion said. Just speak the word. Just speak the word, and my situation will change. Now I know it's sickness, but is it just is this just for sickness? No. It's also for 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 money, it's for it's for deliverance, it's for teenagers, 
It's for whatever sit job, situation, circumstances, marriages, relationships, whatever is not lining up with covenant, God's will, God's purpose, God's plan. Just speak the word. Now that's what the centurion said to Jesus. Now in the new covenant, after Jesus dies, he takes up residence within us. And Christ is in us now. And now Christ is speaking the same word, but through our lips. He's not on the outside like that centurion, where I could say to Jesus, driving down the, down the highway, and I'm really going through something, I said, Jesus, come on, help me out, Lord. Just speak the word, and this thing will change. That would be nice, but you know what's nicer? Christ is living in me, and I'm looking in and saying, what are you saying about my situation? And then when my spirit grabs it, or I get it out of the word, I'll just speak it, and it's me and him speaking together, and it has to change. The centurion said it. If you speak the word, my situation will change. And if you can get a word of God, whether it's out of the Bible or from the Holy Spirit in you, and you speak that, it's the same exact thing. It has to be, or he wouldn't be living in us if it doesn't operate like what I just said. So let me go back to that story. I'm going to take a quick break. I want to go back to that story of that guy in the hotel room, and I want to tell you more of his uh, personal experiences that what he said. Hey, we want to hear from you. Email us at www.byfaith.tv. Go to our contact page and shoot us an email. That's www.byfaith.tv. You're listening to By Faith Radio, where the good news of Jesus Christ is proclaimed 4,000 hours anymore. We lost all our audio files uh, due to the different platform that um, that particular um, website changed their platform. So we lost a lot of our audio files. So all you're going to get now on the website's video. So we lost a lot of audio files. I was planning on just converting those files over to the radio station you know, and I still may do that, but the Lord, I, that was my plan, but if, you've, if you're trying to keep up with the radio, you can see that we've not put anything new on there for several weeks, because I just don't have the mind of the Lord yet on, I thought that we would just show, you know, run all those audio files that we lost, and that way you could still listen to them on the radio, and, um, but that's not the case, I don't know, 
I'm still praying about it, so just keep checking the radio. We're, we're, I think what it's going to eventually be, which is a whole lot more work for me, like I need more to do, but if it's the will of the Lord, we got to do it, and that is new content. Just, just forget about some of these fi- these old these old teachings, and just rehash them with new and uh, new content. Create new archives. I don't know. Um, I think that's where he's leading. Okay, so just keep checking in on the radio, if um, and hopefully we'll get some new stuff up there. But until there, just keep till then, just keep us in prayers. And if you if you haven't watched or listened to the radio, um, get on it now because those files are going to all be gone, and we'll be playing new playlists and new content and so forth and so on. Let me get back to this story. So this guy's five o'clock in the morning, and he's um. I mean, the glory of God is charging the atmosphere in that room. Uh, we could stop right there. Have you ever gone into an atmosphere and it's evil? It's just dark? Or you may be in your house and you have a visitor come over and the whole atmosphere changes because of the whatever spirit or presence is on that person. They change the atmosphere. This is a true story. Many of you heard me use this. When I was living in Arizona, I had a friend who was really um, good, I mean, in the sense that he was deep, and uh, we got into a lot of good theology, and ended up being a covenant friend for years. And I remember living in Arizona, I went to his house one day, and he said, you know that guy in that particular church? I'm like, yeah. Well, he came over, and he wanted to pray with me, because guy, this guy was in a wheelchair. And... Um, he said he prayed, and I, you know, I let him go through what he all, what he felt like God told him to do. And he said, and and then he left. And okay, he said it took me two days, two days to drive out what he brought in my house. Now this was, my gosh, this was like in the eighty six, eighty seven, and um, he said it took him. I mean, there was a heaviness. Him and his wife were fighting just that I don't know what we don't know what was on that guy but whatever it was he whatever he left it took my friend two days to get the atmosphere in his home back to where it was now you do with that what you want but I know he was telling the truth and you know that on a smaller scale even where if you walk into the uh, your workplace and someone's mad yelling. You can feel that evil. You can feel that anger that's coming from that person, charging the atmosphere. One person can ruin the whole day of something. You know that to be true. So he's he, this guy in this motel room with this other guy. They're they're speaking the word and charging the atmosphere with the glory of God. And he said what he visualized when this was when they were actually doing it, that it was like. Do you remember when we went into um, saw or um, Iraq, Desert Storm in what ninety ninety one under the under George Bush, and they showed you all those heat sinking missiles, all that stuff going on at nighttime going. This is what this guy, he said, it seemed like to him that they were just launching wor- the word, which was like missiles, if you, could, if you could visualize it in the physical sense, launching all these missiles in the, in the, in the principalities and powers of the air and just bringing down strongholds, bringing down imaginations. You do it with the word of God. That's the only offensive weapon that we have to fight the enemy. And the atmosphere... Like I said, changed. Now you think, well, just words will do that. No. Nope. It's the Spirit on those words. And that word is Christ. So when you're speaking the word into a situation or circumstance, you're actually speaking Jesus into that situation or circumstance. Everybody knows this scripture. All things work together for good. To those who love God and are, cor- and are called according to His purpose. Everybody knows that scripture. But what it literally means, if you read it more in the Greek, it means God enters into all things. 
He doesn't cause those things, those bad things, but he'll enter into those things, mix himself into the situation or circumstance, and produce good out of it. But not all things work together for good if you don't bring him into the situation. Well, how do I bring him into the situation? By speaking the word of God into that situation. See, you're sitting around waiting for God to work this, that, and the other for good. And God's like, I have to be in it, and I can only get in it by your faith of, of, of the word. Faith in me is, Jesus is the word, and if you believe that word, you'll speak that word. So when you speak that word, God is entering in through that word, because that word is Christ, and he's working your situation for good, but it's according to the words you're speaking. Remember Numbers 14, when they were speaking bad words, negative words, unbelief. He said, what came out of their mouth is what I'm going to do. And Jesus said, be it done according to your faith. Right? You don't understand how much... It's not that you're in control, because God is, but God cannot work through unbelief. God can't work through you if you are not looking to him and speaking his word in the situation that's that that's just that's what faith does faith is an act based upon a belief sustained by confidence you act in faith by speaking what you believe now when the bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you everybody knows that scripture in uh, james but the scripture before that right before that it says submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. In that submitting to God, you're submitting. you got to understand, God has manifested himself through the word. So when you submit to that word, that means I submit to that word, I amen that word, and I speak that word. Then the enemy will flee. In your submission to the word, the enemy has to flee. But it's not just, it's acting. It's, it's acting on that word. That word, remember, if, if we're just talking about words in, the, in a book, the Bible, that means nothing until you open it and you activate it with your faith. Stand on it. Speak it. That's standing on it. Speaking it is standing on it. Speaking is believing it. So when you're speaking the word into an atmosphere, it says the enemy must flee. That's how you resist the enemy with what? With your IQ? Do, do you submit or do you resist the enemy with your talent? You, you can't even resist the enemy with praise and worship unless that praise and worship is word-oriented. And I don't know any praise and worship that's not word-oriented, but I'm just saying. Um, if some new age guy comes into your church and he just wants to sing about how beautiful the sky is and the streams in the, in the, in, in the water, the water, the streams in the desert, and, and, and has no God Jesus oriented to it, that praise and that worship goes nowhere. It, your praise and your worship has to be word oriented. And, and I've never, I've honestly never, although I've heard people in churches, even in my area, I had one elderly guy say, these people are singing songs that have no Jesus in it. Well, that's what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, they're in my neighborhood. They're in my city. Singing songs with no cross, no Jesus, no word at all. It's that feel-good, kumbaya stuff. It doesn't work. So when you resist the enemy, it has to be with the word. The sword. You sing with the sword and you fight with the sword. You talk to one another with the sword. Call the word. Call your friend up on the phone. Make it be word oriented. Word based. Your worship's word. If everything you do is word oriented. Faith is oriented to the word of God. Faith cannot be in anything else but the word of God. That's the only way. And I tell you, because people don't, do, don't use this scripture right, they're resisting the devil in their own willpower and self-effort. Like, you know, they're going to go after the devil on their own. No, you, 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 have to, you have to speak the word. Now, I'm not a Jerry Savelle fan, but I'll give credit where credit is due. I remember a message he did called The Fourth Man. Oh, my gosh. 
If I can find, if I can, I know I have the cassette somewhere. Cassette, yep, you heard that right, cassette. Um, I will put it on MP3 and I'll play it on the radio because I'm telling you, I was working at the TV station, 18 years old, and we were playing Kenneth Copeland, uh, his programs. I tell you right, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I just got on my shift, I was working an afternoon shift, and I was the switcher that week. That's the switcher means you put on the commercials, you put on the program. You, you, what you watch on TV is a result of what I was doing. And um, and Kenneth Copeland was play, playing. I'm 18 years old. I don't know anything you know, that much. Only been saved three years. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching it. And I'm telling you what, I and I'm, I wouldn't even really at that point consider myself charismatic. But I got off of my chair. And I, I mean, the spirit of God was coming through. The, I, I, I got to be honest, it was powerful. I, I will look for that cassette and make a, make a point to play it because it, it is one of the great. Anyway, one of the situ- scenarios or pictures he paints about the Word of God is that he talked about the word, speaking the word, and confessing the word, and and he said it's think of it as. As the word being a vice, a vice grip, like on a tool in a, in a tool sh- tool shed, tool shop, or whatever, and you got those vices on the side of the the bench, and you put something in there and you tighten it to work on it. That's a vice. He said, think of every time you speak the word, you're just that word is just tightening on the devil's head until he can't take it no more, and he has to flee. He's got to get out of the atmosphere. He's got to get out of the situation. You run him out of the the the, the problem. Well, I, I, I thought of that when I looked at this word today. Resist the enemy, and he will flee. Because you're putting his head in a vice. And every time you're speaking that word in faith, that vice is getting tighter and tighter on the, on the demonic realm. And it has to flee. It, it, you can call me a fool, but what is the Bible? What, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Believe that? But you resist him. With the word. I gotta hurry up here, I'm running out of time. All the other armor in Ephesians chapter 6, the helmet, the shield, all that is for defensive purposes. The only offensive weapon in that armor is the sword, and that's the weapon we use. The only weapon we use is the word of God. Now I'm gonna say something, and I have to, and it's nothing new, is these these uh, celebrate programs, these 12 step programs. You don't you can't work. the enemy loves them because they don't work. I know that I, I know I just offended people and I don't do it purposely. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Jesus said the truth and that truth is the word. And us speaking the word, look at that centurion. Just speak the word, Lord, and I'll be delivered from alcohol. Just speak the Lord word. Just speak the word, Lord, and I'll be delivered from this, that, or the other. Speak the word, Lord, and you'll heal. Speak the word, Lord, and you'll deliver. Speak the word, Lord, and you'll provide. That that centurion said, Lord, give me twelve things to do to go back home and heal my servant. He didn't do he didn't even say, Hey, I hear this thing called Ten Commandments. If you tell me those Ten Commandments, I'll go home and do them, and my servant will be healed. He didn't do that. So, do with that with what you want. The Word of God is your sword and nothing else. Anything else is man-made. I don't know. I said that in the beginning, and I don't think it registered, so i got to say it again. If you or your pastor or any friend or anybody who claims to be a Christian wants to add anything to the Word... It's man made stuff. It really is. It's man made stuff. And it's just and all it does is gonna water down the word. Because you're gonna trust more in the man made stuff than the word itself. Think about it. I, I, I could I could tell you a story. I don't got time, I'm running out of time. How do you tear down principalities and powers? How do you tear down strongholds of second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three? You launch those missiles into the air. You're charging the atmosphere with the word, and the enemy must bow, he must submit, and you win. That is as simple as that. So let me close with this. Christians should never live in or with 
demonic interference. Well, many don't believe that they even experience demonic interference or demonic oppression or demonic um, possession. Those words aren't found in the Bible. It's demonized. So let me put it this way. Christians should never entertain demonization in any way, shape, or form. It's not your lot. It's not... Remember, Job's a contrast. You are not part of that old covenant system where you're in his domain. No. He has to enter your domain now. Think about that. You're, when you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness, his domain, we were all there at one time, and translated into the kingdom of light, God's domain, kingdom means the king's domain, then for the enemy to interfere, or demonics to interfere in your life, they have to be in your dominion. And your dominion is his dominion. There's no third, there's no third dominion. It's either the dominion of darkness or God's kingdom. Now think about this. For the enemy, for you to experience demonic interference, they have to get in your domain. And you're in God's domain. We're one with God. We're in the Godhead. He has to somehow penetrate into that, which he does through your mind, not your spirit, but your mind. And you either leave it there, or you aggressively deal with it, as Jesus did. Don't tell me you don't have or will experience demonic interference when Jesus himself did. When Jesus himself did. So you can't say you're, you're, you're above demons, or demons will never touch you. Demons will never come around you. Well, the most anointed guy in the world was Jesus, and look, he had the devil, evil personified, in his atmosphere, six feet away from him, called the devil. So I'm telling you, once you understand this, you'll experience it, but see, it says resist the devil and he'll flee. That's assuming the devil can have access to anyone any time. That's just the way it is. He had access to Adam and Eve. He's going to have access to you. But when he gets that access, however it comes, you detect it right off and you deal with it aggressively. You don't let it remain. You don't entertain it. You don't fantasize about it. You don't. You run after it and don't let it sit there and formulate and produce compromise or sin. Once detected, you aggressively deal with it. Now, in Revelation 12, we talked about this Sunday. It says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Okay? They overcame him by words. And the testimony is covenant. I told you this. The, the worst thing the English language did to us was turn covenant into the word testament. It's the word of the covenant. Not testimony. See, we, we, I'll, I'll tell you how stupid we are, and, and it's not your fault. No, I'm, not, I'm not talking down. When you see this scripture, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Do you know how many people believe that means your testimony of how you got saved? Are you testifying about Jesus? Because you get screwed up on that word, testimony. That word is covenant. The words of the testament. You are proclaiming the words of the covenant. And Isaiah, and I, and, and I wasn't planning on looking this up, but get your Bible, and this done, I'm done. I'll be done. I can't get off this scripture. I cannot get off this scripture. Isaiah, I don't got my reading glasses on, so I'm going to have to take, take these down a little bit. But I'll give you a second to get there if you got your Bible. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. I can't get off this scripture. I'm telling you, this is, there's something on this. If not for you, at least for me. Isaiah 59. Now remember what? They overcame him by the word of their testimony. And we just showed you that's covenant. By the words that's in the new covenant and the old. For instance, Paul makes this statement in um 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. All 
the promises of God are yes to those in Christ Jesus. You know that scripture. All the promises of God are yes to those in Christ Jesus. Now the New Testament was not written when Paul wrote that. In fact, when Paul wrote that, the New Testament was in the process of being written by these guys, but not completely. In fact, if you didn't know this, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was not written till after Paul died. These guys came back and wrote. So Paul didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Paul didn't have Acts because Luke wrote that after the fact. So a lot of Paul's the, the first one who started pinning some stuff. So when he says all the promises of God are yes to those in Christ Jesus, he was referring to the Old Testament. Because the new had not been written. Now it includes the new. So when Paul says all the promises, that means whatever you can find in the Old Testament and whatever you find in the new are yes and amen. They're not even up for debate. They're automatically yours and they are, if you can find a promise, you've got the yes to it. Now watch this. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. And this is in reference to the devil. Revelation chapter 12, he's talking about they overcame him, they overcame them. It is the demonic forces, it's the spirit of Antichrist, it's Satan himself, and they overcame him by the words of their testimony, which is covenant. Now look at Isaiah chapter 59, and look at verse 19. It says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy, that's the devil, comes in like a flood, What's God going to do? The Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Drop down to verse 21. He'll tell you what that standard is that rises up against the, the, the devil. As for me, this is my what? Testimony? No. Covenant. Because that's what it means. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My Spirit that's upon them, that's us being born of the Spirit, and my words which I put where? Where does God, God puts his spirit in you, but where does he put his words at? Right there it is. My spirit that is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth. Th that's it. We speak the covenant. We speak the word of God. He says, and they shall not depart out of your mouth. So if you're going to speak what the media says, you're already departing from the words that God put in your mouth because you're going to speak what CNN says. You're going to speak what man adds to the word. His traditions, his steps, his secrets, his keys. That's all man. Stick to the word. Watch this. They shall not depart out of your mouth nor out of the mouth of your children. So now you've got to raise your kids with the word of God in their mouth and your grandchildren with the word of God because he says, your mouth your children's mouth and your children's children's mouth. Your grandchildren's mouth. Now that's that's how you war. What are you speaking? What do you you're gonna you're gonna speak what you believe. Out of the mouth the heart speaks. So I just want to close with that. And we're under an hour. That is so I don't wanna I don't wanna keep you. I know you got CNN to watch. I know MSNBC, you got your favorite guy with Fox News or whatever you're don't do it. Goliath is speaking through that TV, taunting you with all kinds. Even preachers. So, dude, you're not, just because someone's on TV doesn't mean he's right. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you learn who's speaking the truth. And if the Holy Spirit says to you that I'm not speaking the truth, then you've got to turn me off. I'm, I'm not out to build a church. I'm not out to win friends and influence people. I'm just out to get the truth out there because I know that's the only thing that works. The Word of God is the only thing that works. That's why our church is a strict Bible teaching church. I mean, we will wear you out with Scripture. Not with my opinion. We'll wear you out with Scripture. I won't wear you out with stories. Although I may share one every now and then, but you're, you're going to get 90% bulk word. Because that's the only thing that works, folks. That's the only thing I have trust in. That's the only thing I have hope and faith in. Keep the Word of God in your mouth. This is how we war. We war with the Word of God in our mouth. If you would like to give according to Galatians 6.6, 6, we now accept PayPal 
visit our website at www dot by faith dot tv go to the giving page and see the different ways you can give that's www dot by faith dot tv You're listening to By Faith Radio, broadcasting grace and truth around the world 24-7. Remember, we're not religious, just real. 